Hi, Doug. It, uh, I can't hear you. Apparently, I can't click the automatically oh, stop video button. Yeah, my. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, it's on here. I'm going to just send Victor and uh, Caleb reminders here. If I don't see Kazoo soon, I'm just going to drop. Okay. <laughs> we were promised Kazoo's, I mean. We were promised Kazoo. Well, strictly speaking, there's three more minutes, so. How is this cycle? I'm assuming you've just come back from a cycle. No, I'm about to, uh, after this, that was my plan. Um, so I was just sort of getting, trying to figure out how to, like, this room is probably the coldest one in the condo. And plus, like, I get cold when I sit for a while. So. I was just thinking uh, I'll have my hat ready to go. Can you turn that down? <laughs> my internet dropped. Uh -oh. oh, no. Yeah. Did you turn it off and back on again? Well, I um. Yes, you did. Didn't you? I press disconnect and then reconnect. I didn't actually turn oh. on turn on the router. Um. I, sounds like Caleb's gonna be here. Interestingly, Victor like liked the message about. The Zoom meeting like 22 minutes ago. So I don't know, maybe. So who are these people? So um, there's the chat. So this is a uh, link to. Uh, Victor's, well, not all of it, all the stuff that we released. Um, he's got some stuff on Spotify too, actually. Um, maybe I will add that to the, um, to the uh, playlist. No, I have a playlist. Oh yeah. I that was the thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what is this red in a Zoom meeting? Okay, so that means people can't talk to me or shouldn't talk to me. I don't know what to put. Oh, it is recording. So did somebody else do that or? No, that was you. Okay, I never pressed the button. So see, last time I said the automatically start recording. And it didn't do it, but this time it did. So this time it has. Yeah. So I don't. Did, did it continue to record while I was off, or did you guys notice? I I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I guess we'll find out. Um, okay. Well, um, I don't know. Do we want to just jump in to? Uh, talking about local music and people can hop on, jump in as they get in, or do we want to wait for beeps? Uh, I 
I do not mind. It's not on. Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> and I'll drop the Spotify and the link at Spotify uh -huh. and the. Uh... I will check that out. What's that? I will check that out. <laughs> uh, so, but you can't you can't add an entire artist to a playlist. It seems. <laughs> nope, I think you got to do it song by song or album by album. Yeah. So, Fake Detective is what won instrumental album of the year. So, I will just add that. Definitely. He's got some older stuff. So, did I say instrumental? I meant electronic. I think you I did say instrumental. instrumental. Yeah, electronic. Um, proof once again that I cannot do multiple things at once. Did I freeze again? All right. Go take your case of Corona. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is Doug in the kitchen? Doug's in the kitchen. Doug's um, me. Yeah, I, the, I don't know why all of a sudden it's been, I mean, I don't, it doesn't drop like that during the week. Um, maybe that, but I don't know if that one actually dropped um, internet or if that was just Zoom. I couldn't tell you for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, I like the green cushions. They look nice. Oh, yeah. yeah there's a lot of green. Um, okay, I mean, I should be able to just join. Uh, yeah. It's much warmer in here, so. Is that Mrs. Didn't Doug? Check it. <laughs> oh, oh it yeah. Off, Take it off. Hi, Mrs. Dog. <laughs> hey, she can't hear you. I, I know, but you can pass the message on. <laughs> oh, we have a wife sighting. Yeah. You can you can pass it on. That says hello. That's Beth. <laughs> um, all right, so I think I Caleb misunderstood the whole can't minimize my Zoom while you're recording. Okay, um, the whole Zoom thing with the password, but maybe I can invite him and he'll get it in his email. I don't know how that works. Oh, we got somebody connecting. Who this? Kitty. Still says, yeah, he's going to be our background. Maybe he wants to be involved. He does? Hey, Caleb. Hello. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so, um, are we gonna are we gonna give up on Emily? Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think so. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, first of all, I'm not sure if Zoom is even like, like, can they use Zoom in Kazakhstan? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I feel like that's impossible for any of us to know. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, so, but so the thing is, is that Victor um, liked the message like 20 minutes ago. So, you know, it's on his on his mind. Um, well, if you guys want to start talking, I can. Um, I can I can email Victor and see um, if he's had if he's having technical difficulties. Well, what do you want to talk about local music, Doug? Because you and I are the only ones that share the same locality. Yeah, so I mean, I think that that um, you know that obviously broadens what we can talk about. So um, you know, I was hoping that Victor was here because I think um, most of us would be pretty interested in like you know, what music is uh, like in Kazakhstan. I think, you know, that's something that people right. don't. Um, well, I feel like everybody's local music scene is kind of shut down at the moment. Well, that's like, true, too. Like, there, is, there is no local music scene. Yeah. yeah. There's, what you're li- there's what you're listening to in your headphones. That's the local music scene now. <laughs> right. No, but, no, there's, in the UK, there's still a huge scene, even though we're in lockdown. There are people that are doing online concerts and things like that, but I haven't really had time... To be checking that out, have you? Uh, I mean, I know that they've been happening, but I haven't, I haven't tuned into them. Um, you're in Portland, right, Caleb? Right. Yeah. So, um, what's? Uh, I mean, Ben and I are in Minneapolis, and then Beth's in the UK. So, um, I mean, my understanding, there's a lot of uh, a lot of musicians coming out of Portland. I, I mean, uh, does that is a pretty strong scene there? Yeah, yeah, it's a great music scene here. Yeah. And then, Ben, what do you think about the scene here? I think, um, I think I mean, we have it's a couple... been pretty non existent for the last 10 years. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we have I think uh... the best days of the Minneapolis music scene were like when I was a toddler, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like Prince. Like yeah. Prince and the replacements and Husker Du and. Oh, I forgot the about Suburbs that. and. Yeah. information society and we had all kinds of neat stuff but we don't have that anymore we have some hip-hop now that's like okay-ish but you know minneapolis hip-hop is not a thing really beyond the local scene so i don't know well, i think it's it disappointing could it could change it any day i remember i used to live in kansas city and like no one knew hip-hop there and then Tech Nine came around. I was gonna say Tech Nine, KC uh, yeah. represent. Yep. Solid. Just takes one big guy to get big, and then. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And I mean, there's atmosphere, but I haven't heard much. Yeah, uh, but you you got to think like atmosphere. Their yeah. first album is got to be 15, 20 years ago now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're not exactly talking new, cutting edge things. Yeah, I don't know. Like how do, how do you feel about Lizzo? Shit. I mean, like, Minneapolis Lizzo, likes Lizzo to claim her, De- but... Isn't, isn't Lizzo from Detroit? Well, she, originally, she's from somewhere else. How are you going to claim somebody that wasn't born and raised and uh, didn't actually have a career, like, in your place? That seems... Well, she got started I don't understand here. the claiming of Lizzo by Minneapolis. That doesn't... Like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I mean... If we're just going to claim people, we should... I mean, Lizzo's good, but we should just start claiming everyone then. Yeah, well, she moved to Minneapolis in 2011. So I think, like, she was here when, like, things broke. And so that's why Minneapolis claims her, basically. I mean, I, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I mean... That, that shows you... That really says it all about our music scene right now, though, that we feel a need to claim people that, you know, are debatably even from here. Yeah. Um... I was just thinking about um, about Bob Dylan. I mean, there's like a mural. That, I, don't, I mean, he's from, no, I don't think Bob, like he got out of here as soon as he was physically able to. So how do yeah. you, like he was like, no, fuck this shit. I'm gone straight to New York. Which, yeah. You know, fair, right? But like how, 
And he wasn't. He certainly wasn't from Minneapolis. He's from Duluth. Well, he's born in Duluth. So I'm pretty sure he's from Hibbing. Well, his hometown, yeah, is Hibbing, but he was born in Duluth. I don't know where my, Hibbing my is. My dad grew up in Hibbing. Yeah, I've never even heard of Hibbing. at the hardware store, and when Bob Dylan would come home, he would sometimes see him in the hardware store when Bob Dylan would come home to visit his parents. So that's, that's the closest. But I mean, like, but Hibbing is not Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah. It's like North. a three-and-a-half-hour drive. Yeah, so I guess that's north of Duluth then? Or? Yeah, Hibbing is, like, way, okay. way up north. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Never. On the Iron Range. I'm ne- I haven't been north of Blaine, so. You haven't been, you've, how long have you lived in Minnesota and you've never been north of Blaine? 2016 is, well, strictly speaking, I might have been north of Blaine because I um, I took the train, this was when I lived in Wisconsin, actually, I took the train to uh, Devil's Lake. Um, oh, but, so you well, it crosses Alexandria. at Fargo. It crosses at Fargo. Yeah, so you so went I don't to know. Alexandria and Moorhead. Yeah, but, but I mean. Doug. I, you ride a bike. How have you not been to northern Minnesota? That's like the good part of the state to ride a bike. I know, but I don't have a car. <laughs> so I have to like get there. Get to ride with somebody. Well, yeah. So. Um, Beth, where are you at in the UK? So I'm in the south. So, so are, southern. Are you, are you in the Wokingham office? Yeah. Okay. Do we still have two offices over there? Yeah. Okay. Are you in London or where are you at? Uh, so I'm about 30 minutes from London. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm Hampshire. I'm the posh part of England. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by the accent, posh part of England. No, we can't uh, tell. They all sound the same. Dog. Oh, yeah. shut up, Ben. Shut <laughs> up. Leave me alone. Yeah, so I'm in the South and there's quite the music scene here, which is cool. And obviously, but the, you both, two of you who know me better than oh. yourself, um, I obviously cover quite a lot of the music scene in the South. Yeah, so, but you also cover, like, touring musicians that come through as well, right? Do indeed. So, I mean, that's an interesting um, part of the scene, too, um, is just, like, how many musicians you get coming through. And we do get, we do get that, then. Oh, yeah, we do. And actually, I think that's really gotten better in the last 10 years. Yeah. Like national acts coming through, which has been nice. But I used to live in Arizona and like people avoid that because of the politics, like bands would avoid uh, there. So like moving to Portland really opened up music for me. Like all kinds of bands want to tour through here. And like Brooklyn, it seems like people, bands from Brooklyn want to move to Portland to live here a little while and then they move somewhere else. (laughs) So do you guys claim them the same way that we claim Lizzo then? No, not really. In fact, Portland people don't even want them here, but they come here and then they give us credit when they come into town. For (laughs) That's the difference. So in Minnesota, if you like stop for a cup of coffee somewhere in Minnesota, we'll claim you as one of ours because we don't have anything (laughs) else to hold on to. (laughs) That's not really, but but Minnesota has a really great art museum too. I know that. Yeah, we have stuff. uh, you know, we have some things, but Andy, isn't just... that where uh, where your friend is the ER surgeon in Minnesota? In Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee. Sorry, wrong place. Totally. Yeah, right. close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Milwaukee is an interesting place for the music scene. I used to live in Madison, and I think they are oh, so close to my wife. Yeah, it's uh it's close enough to Chicago that like um you know people people sort of like go down to Chicago to sort of like even if they live in Milwaukee or Madison um it's kind of, it's a weird a weird thing. I was going to say I don't know if I can hear a single band from Milwaukee. I mean Detroit, Chicago, sure, but oh, what does Wikipedia say? Is Weezer <laughs> from Milwaukee? That doesn't sound right, but yeah. I, I mean, they may have been originally, but that it just doesn't sound right. Oh, I was, the I viol- the, okay. The Violent Femmes are from Milwaukee. That counts for a lot. Oh yeah, Violent Femmes. Yeah, that's great. That's, oh, my wife's friend Amy used to babysit one of their kids. 
There you go. Yeah, that's about it, though. That's, uh, I mean, that, that counts for a lot, but there's not, there's not a lot of second tier. It's like Violent Femmes and then. I know they had a, um, they have a decent, or did at one point, have a decent uh, hardcore scene there. Um, I, would, mm. yeah, I would think there would be some metal bands or something. Falling out of the woodwork. I think Steve Miller's from there. Really? I think. So, Is um, Miller from there? He's from Wisconsin somewhere. Uh, I feel like that's trivia that if you just drop that out there somewhere, no one would ever care enough to correct you. <laughs> that's great. The, um, so I know the guy who, uh, well, at one point he was um, running that website that I just dropped in the chat. And the yeah, what's the band with like the German name? That's uh, um, I'm not gonna pronounce it because I'm gonna butcher it. That's the band I was thinking of. Hardcore band from Milwaukee. Mm. Hmm. I'm ready to get some more coffee. I'll be right back. Yeah, they are from. Huh. Name was taken from the German Bible. Huh. Remember a minute ago when you were letting Beth talk about stuff? We should go yeah. back to that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just listening. I'm having fun listening. It's not. It's just. We're talking about local music in places that none of us actually live. I mean, I guess all music is local somewhere, right? Yeah. And there's a, there's a huge scene here, well, and I, I'm very lucky. So one thing that I actually did think about when I was talking about local music is, like, the difference between, like, local music and regional music, um, which, uh, I mean, I think at some level doesn't really matter. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's probably, like, people in the Midwest tend to, like, travel more you know than if like you live on the east coast then well i don't know i mean i think now the thing that differentiates local music is like bands whose shows you can go to on a regular basis because they play locally but like what is local music when you can go online and download anything from anywhere instantly you know it's not like they're releasing seven inches that you can only get at certain record shops in your town they're releasing singles online that you can get anywhere so really the only thing that makes them local is that they play locally on a regular basis. So if you had some national band that kept coming through your town, you know, four or five times a year. Yeah. That line kind of gets blurred, right? Right. I, 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 I bet there are places that, um, you know, where it's easier to get people seven inches and LPs and things of that nature. Um, there are, but that's kind of like an old school 90s way of, you know, having a local music scene. Yeah. yeah. Here is pretty easy to do that. I know. Yeah, I think Portland's a special case, though. Yeah, maybe. Um, where's... Yeah, I mean, I know, you know, like DC definitely has a few music shops, but and we do here, but it's like, I don't know what they're what percentage of like local stuff um and i don't i don't know from the stuff that we've released um like if those have any geographic um, oh, okay but here's my point though what does local mean like you invited from somebody from kazakhstan who you know and whose music you've released like what does local even mean in that context yeah, so I mean, I like, think, you, like you probably know more musicians in Kazakhstan than you do in Minneapolis right now. So what is local? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's not not actually the case. I know. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know at least as many in Minneapolis. Okay, as, <laughs> so what, you, what my point stands, right? Like, no, what okay. Local well, mean so when... I mean, if we're counting St. Paul, and I definitely know, more, I definitely know more in the Twin Cities than I do in Kazakhstan. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, 
So I'll drop I'll drop Casey's stuff in the um the chat too since I actually I'll drop Casey and Brent both of their stuff in there. Townhouse Woods, Casey's stage name. Ooh, that was what I wanted to press there. What are um Beth, what are some local bands that we would know of? Around here. Yeah. Um if you oh you might know Ruben. They were quite large, very, very large. Ruben Freeze the Atlantic are a local band to hear. Uh I'm trying to think. You me at six, local band to hear. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, they're one of ours. Uh Newton Faulkner. He was one of ours. All in like a 20 minute, I'm going to have a quick Google because then. <laughs> <laughs> what I was thinking about this when you mentioned local music, Doug, like when I think about Minneapolis musicians, like that had a big national or international impact, like they're all closer to my parents' age than they are to mine. Like I think Paul Westerberg might be my dad's age. So, I don't know. I just, I don't think there is much of a local scene anymore, or at least a local scene that has any kind of national impact here. Yeah. And I mean, I think that, you know, I know people that, um, Oh, Joe know, Strummer was one of ours. Joe Strummer? Mm-hmm. From Guildford. Nice. Okay. Well, all right. You win. That might Thanks. be better than Prince. Oh, well, he's certainly not as big a name as Prince. No. The Stranglers but... was one of ours. Genesis. Eric Genesis Patton. is the biggest Prince. Probably. Jimmy Page was one Phil of Phil Collins or Peter Gabriel, though? They're, the Jam. Yeah, that's the, that's the question. You could debate that. Yeah. I feel like Peter Gabriel solo, but Phil Collins Genesis. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. I, I, I don't like Genesis, but I recently found an album of theirs that I like. Let me go get it. I'll show you. Uh-oh. Genesis is great. I feel like Phil Collins solo is no good though. So um, I dropped in that Silverback Quartet. I think, I don't know if they got a new website when they moved to a quartet because they used to be Silverback Trio. Oh. Uh, I don't know if that right name yeah, I think rings you, a bell. I think you mentioned these guys to me before, yeah. But um, Brent, who's their bassist, he also plays in an Iron Maiden tribute band. Um, and apparently he's been working on some solo stuff, but uh, he had some problems with... Um, with um the mix like with his you know he's like okay so this brings up a good point because i feel like there's a lot of local tribute bands that like play shows and are just kind of around town now oh like yeah like airball and stuff like that is that a we have some amazing pink floyd cover bands in town it's kind of weird okay sorry hit us with the genesis again oh so no it's okay it's peter gabriel but um it's pretty sweet it, it's a good one yeah. Oh, I really it's kind of weird. <laughs> See, I think Peter Gabriel solo is good. I just <coughs> Yeah, I was in Chicago recently and I bought a bunch of albums. It was pretty great to be in town and to just raid all their record stores for for weird stuff. It was a lot of fun. They have anything, a... anything you're especially proud of from that trip? Oh, like a, like a big find. Um, I found this. And I've been looking for this for a while. It's not the OG. It's just a. Uh, it's pretty huh. good. It's, a, it's not the original album, but it's a weird one. Wilburn Burchette, uh, guitar grimoire, and let me give you a feel for it. What with the. I, are you familiar with that? No. Okay, well, that whole album is like, he, he was real f big in the 60s and 70s. Well, not real big. He was kind of underground, but he had an advertisement going in Rolling Stone magazine and for these albums. But like, here's the song titles on here. Invocation to the Horned One, Fire Spell, Building the Circle, Witches Will. Oh, yeah, so you kind of, it's kind of an occult, you know what you're getting into sort of deal with that kind of. 
Yeah, yeah. It's meditation music for, for pagan witches. <laughs> That's I was going to say, that sounds like metal band uh, song name. There's a lot of like that. It's totally not metal. It's like, yeah. Honor. It's really That honor. was like a thing in the 60s. It was like occult music, but like it wasn't metal. Um, no, nah, it's not metal at all. It's really, a, really ambient sounding. You know, like. Yeah, so. And, I don't know. What were my other big songs? Yeah, I have this reputation of like listening to the, um, to like weird music. But uh, Caleb has definitely got me beat, so, um, yeah. Hey, you don't have that reputation, no, not at all. <laughs> hey, what are you talking about, Doug? I'm shocked, no. Shocked. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of impressed that we made Carol run away after about a week. <laughs> yeah. It's like, she was like, I, fuck this shit, I'm out. I, I posted a, um, a like country western cover of uh limp biscuits rolling and that was too much for her. <laughs> yeah that was i don't even know who carol is that. who is carol i've played so much weird music around my son that like this morning i put on something normal i put on zz top trace ombres and my son said take it off i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> bang it though that's a great song well, I just like, what are kids gonna listen to to freak their parents out now? Like, that's not possible. Well, like, I grew up listening. I grew up listening to Slayer. Like, nothing, nothing any kid is gonna listen to is probably gonna be. Like, there's it just depends to go on the parents. That. I mean, really. If he was just playing normal pop music, it would freak me out. Yeah, but that's <laughs> how kids are. Yeah. Um. Beth, to answer your question, I don't. I didn't hear if Ben answered it, but uh, she works in marketing. Oh, thanks. No problem. Yeah, all those marketing people are lightweights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't argue with it. So <laughs> we only have one in the UK, and she's lovely. She's not a lightweight. She's nice. Oh, she's nice, but. I think I think Ben might admit, musically speaking, but yeah. Oh yeah, no, Suzanne isn't. She's great. Right. Have you guys heard the Mercury Tree? Oh, Mercury that name tree. is really familiar. But it's, Tree is. They're a, they're a Portland, Oregon band, but they're into microtonal music. It's kind of metally proggy sounding. The Mercury Tree, but anyway, they're in this micro microtonal music, and there's kind of a microtonal scene in Portland. It's pretty. It's pretty out there. I like it. Any recommendations? Huh? Any recommendations of theirs? Uh, their newest one's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, Ben Spees. Oh wait, no. Uh, I think yeah, I might ben know Spies, it. Ben Spees. That's the singer and songwriter. Yeah, but is it a different Ben Spees that I know? Uh, it may be the same one. I don't know because he's a friend of mine. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I but, think uh, it's got to be yeah. They're an interesting Portland band, and and I I just think it's strange to have this microtonal scene. I'm always having to explain what it is, and uh, anyway, like regular guitars are like twelve edo, which means there's twelve frets in an octave, and these guys are playing with like I don't know, maybe they have like I have a guitar here that has forty one notes in an octave it's pretty weird so. oh their take is math rock okay that tells me what i need to know i'll have to check that out well it's different the harmonically it's different than most of the math rock out there so it's, they got this pan by this one critic that said they played everything out of tune which was not true <laughs> <laughs> but but it's true if you don't understand what microtonal music is so it's kind of funny I thought it was great. Beck Cruz, huh? Ah, this is this is bothering me. That I know this name, but I don't. Is it from this though? So I think you kind of touched on it, but part of that other thing is local scene is you might actually know people. Yeah. Like, coincidentally, like you knew them, and then later you find out they make music. I usually end up knowing them because they make music. I make music. Me too. Yeah. Me too, man. You don't have any weird coworkers that you find out later that they 
I've had a couple like that where I didn't find out they were in bands until way, way later. I'm that weird co-worker. Like, that's the entirety of the UK office of me. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> we have Doug, so. Okay. The Ben Spees, I think I found out who he is. Um, it's spelled differently. Um, he plays for North Carolina FC, and I think he used to play for the Columbus Crew. Yep, and he also played for Minnesota United. That's the Ben Spees that I know. So, um, which is, yeah, that's spelled differently. So I don't know him personally, but that's the name that I knew. Um, huh? I thought I thought Casey lived in St. Paul, but his uh, his website says Minneapolis now. Maybe he moved. Clearly, we're not like big pros, or I would know if he moved. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know Boston has a good music scene, like Grassroots. Boston? Yeah. Oh my God, I love Y Oak big time. I'm a but like I spend quite a lot of time in Boston. Oh really? Yeah, Boston's awesome scene. Oh wait, I'm thinking Baltimore. Oh, so dude, I'm a I'm a Boston girl. Boston girl. I think you're Boston. Smith is from Boston, right? Boston. Um, Nick Burgess, the uh, Northeast Artist of the Year, who's now a uh, regional um, judge, Caleb. He's uh, he's from Boston. His band um, I means he won as a solo artist, but his band Hex Map is um, they're kind of like proggy industrial metal sort of. Um, that sort of vein. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily throw them into. Like, almost like sludgy, proggy industrial metal. <laughs> There's probably a word for all of that into one, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. So, um, but they might be worth checking out. Hex Map. They used to be in a band that I loved. I, I mean, much more melodic than um, than Hex Map called. Um, well, now I'm thinking of their album which is Space Crackers. Claw Job was the name of the band. So that might be one that you would like. Um, Beth, which Claw one? Job. Claw Send Job. Me a link. Yeah. Send me a link. Dude, Space Crackers is a, uh, like a, a rock opera. It is just absolutely fantastic. Bless <laughs> um, you, whoever that was. Link me to that band because I wasn't able to find it on Google. Hex map or, or uh, claw job? Claw job, I guess is the one you were saying I would like. No, uh, claw job was the one I was saying that. Uh, I mean, you might like it too, but um, oh, the hex one I. Map? Yeah, hex map was the more I think interesting one. Um, you saying my music taste isn't interesting? That well, it's interesting oh, in a different yeah. way. Oh. So I, I think so. Like, space, space crackers is like. Uh, it's got like. It's incredibly like poppy, but like also like incredibly metallic at times. So there's a, a space war. And Did there's you like just call me poppy? Did you say my music taste is poppy there? Well, I think I think more than Caleb, you do have more pop interest. I mean like Good for her. I'm a metal kid, sir. Shot fired. I am a heavy metal rock and roll kid. And a skinny boy with a guitar singing acoustically. Otherwise, no pop. Yeah, well, you got a lot of white guys with guitar stuff. I love a white guy with a guitar. <laughs> these are, so, I mean, you know, these are white guys with guitars. So, um, <laughs> there you go. I mean, is it acoustic? Otherwise, it's Oh, no. But, I mean, um, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I love it. So, I mean, but I think it's just like, um, sort of like traditional song structures and like, um you know it's not hex map basically um they they also had like more people in it in qual job because hex map is just two guys mike and nick i mean i feel like i need to post some of my local people yeah please do yeah okay Great. okay all right let me just get me laptop I'm start, I'm sitting here trying to think of this band that's really popular in town. And I'm just blanking on the name right now. It's uh man. I think they're probably the most popular 
band in Portland right now, and and uh, I can't think of the name. They're pretty good. It's just they're not weird enough for me. But you guys might. <laughs> you know, one thing I don't like about Spotify is you don't get anything, any information from the links. Like, what no, is this like, artist? Here's an artist. Here's a song. It's, Every once in a while, the about page has. No, no, no. I mean, but look, look at the URL. That, oh like, yeah, it I, doesn't. It doesn't tell you anything. Like you're just gonna have nothing. to trust me. So that's kind of a dangerous, but you're gonna have to trust me. Yeah, I like that. There's danger involved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very dangerous lady. What can I say? I no. like that. You're you're awesome. Sometimes I have my tea without sugar, so you know. Very dangerous. <laughs> very, very wow. dangerous. It's a crazy diet right now, and, and it, it really sucks. It's called the uh, keto diet. Oh, God, why? Oh, that shit it works, sucks. though. Well, my doctor recommended it, and it's the worst. You basically Terrible cannot, rubbish. I can't even eat fruit. Like, basically, if the fruit's, like, citrus, I can't have it. If it's melon, I can't have it. I can only have berries. Keto works, but, like, it's not a long-term thing. It really fucking works though, but yeah, it's not. That's like you have you done a little it while. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh really? See, I've never had. I've never been on some crazy. Di- oh, uh, I've never been on some crazy diet before. So, <laughs> for me, it's really no. Oh, Mope Grooves. That's who. You, that's the band around here that everyone's into. Mope Grooves. Yeah. Good. I, 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 that was driving me crazy. I was trying to think of it. I hear about the mope grooves all the time. Mm-mm-mm. I've seen them live, but I don't know. Not weird enough for me, but to really dig it, you know, like. You're probably what, is weird, what does weird enough for you mean? Like, yeah, what, exactly. is, what are you looking for in terms of weirdness? Oh, God. <laughs> Weird bands, something, but. something that you know. I saw a documentary recently on a guy, and I thought, "Wow, this guy's incredible." Where's this music been? Uh, the Have you guys seen this documentary? Documentary called "The Sugar Man" or "Search for the Sugar Man." No. Was that about the dude that got like really huge in South Africa? Yeah, yeah. Um, Crazy story. Yeah, what the like, fuck was his name? Like, he recorded an album. Rodriguez. Yeah, like, he just recorded this album, and it didn't go anywhere, and somehow got picked up on the radio in South Africa in, like, the 60s or the 70s or something, and he was, like, huge. Yeah, he was huge. He was huge. He was, like, he was like the he South African no Bob Dylan, and he didn't even know it, right? Isn't that the whole thing? Like, this happened, and he had no idea? Yeah, the doc, the guy that makes the documentary, he's like, he finds him. He searches. I fell asleep halfway through this documentary, so I haven't seen the whole thing. But he, uh, I, I, I watch things late at night, and then I fall asleep. It's the local of- radio station had a show where they were talking about the documentary and playing his music, oh. and, like, the music was really good. The music the is story, amazing. The story is just so surreal like how that could even happen i mean that could never happen now because people would hop online and be like hey dude you're famous in south africa but then yeah just absolutely nuts yeah i'll put up some uh, here i'll just put up my band my band camp page with stuff that i listen to sometimes i don't know it's kind of sad <laughs> don't say that don't say that it's kind of sad well, no, I think about it sometimes because sometimes friends of mine come out with albums and because they're my friends, I'll be a patron, you know, but... Hey, me too. Yeah. Supporting but, the local and support your friends. Yeah, I like supporting my friends, but every once exactly. in a while I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, you know, should I really support this? <laughs> oh, man, I gotta check if that thing's on Netflix. This would be a perfect time to watch that. Has everyone watched Tiger King? Just ask him. No. Yeah, I finished oh it yesterday. God, so good. My fucking wife wild. That and it's like, it's just sad. <laughs> oh, Searching for Sugar Man's on Netflix. All right, cool. All right. Uh, so I think we might have had a time zone situation. I don't know if like. I mean, we didn't, we switched daylight savings time a long time ago, so I don't think that's the problem, but um, 
with uh with Victor. Oh, but he's joining. He's there. Yeah. Is he? Is he? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was just check just Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> we can't hear you, Victor, if you said anything. Yeah, you're you're muted. Uh, we're all we're all waiting in silence. Yeah. For, <laughs> say a word. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Someone type in the chat how to turn on the how to turn on the turn off the mute or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I had never been on Zoom until this morning. I had to download it. It was pretty easy to set up though. Zoom is very easy. Yeah. Oh God! I spent all day yesterday. I was I I play music, but I'm like uh, modernizing all my gear. And yesterday, I, the last couple of days, I've spent on just programming this gear and trying to figure out how to use this electronic gear and stuff. And it's been a very boring last couple of days. <laughs> it's, been like, it's been like slamming my head, like trying to run MIDI, and it, it's just sad. A couple of days. Were you able to get yourself unmuted, Victor? Yeah, yeah. It's hey, like, like I'm late. <laughs> Hi. Uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Hi yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if uh, if everybody wants to just go through real quick and like introduce themselves, like you know, ten second version. I'm Doug. Everybody here knows me. I, some level of knowing, so I'm gonna shut up. Uh, I'm Ben. I work with Doug. We work in the same office in Minnesota. I'm Caleb. I I live in Portland, Oregon, and uh, I'm kind of new to this. So this is only number two. So we're all yeah, new. we're all new to this. <laughs> oh, really? I like this. I think this meeting is a great idea to be meeting. <laughs> It's, it's much more stimulating than just making posts on Facebook. <laughs> I, well, I have a bunch of new music to check out now, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was looking at a, like, local Oregon uh, Creative Commons music, and a lot of it's just really terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, um, like it's like it's like stuff. The guy just didn't know enough to copyright his shit, you know. Like, <laughs> I mean, but I did find a I did find a couple things so far. But yeah, the search is real. Yeah, right? um, I don't want to just put out recommendations. I want to put out recommendations if I actually think it's good. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we still have uh, Beth and Victor to go on oh, yeah. the intro. Hi, so. I'm Beth. Hi. I'm from the UK, and yeah, I'm not very interesting. Uh, I, I work oh, with yeah. Doug and Ben, but I'm from the UK, so a completely different office. And I'm Victor, a trip hop producer from Kazakhstan. Wow. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Victor. Hello. Doug sent us a Spotify link earlier. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody's gonna be checking out your tunes. You've worked with Cutside some, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Cutside is uh he's a Crimean. Uh, yeah, he's Crimean. I guess that's the 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 uh <laughs> least political way to refer to his Yeah, I'm not gonna touch that one. Yeah, so um yeah, <laughs> he's Crimean. So um So is trip hop a big thing? in Kazakhstan? I can't say so. I'm only a uh, second person who do, do trip hop in Kazakhstan. Also, oh. here is a girl uh, called Aigul. She is uh, in trip hop too. But uh, I, I can't find uh, any of her links. Uh, she's not on Spotify. She's not on Apple Music, uh, not Bandcamp. What's the point to make music if it's you don't re release it in some somewhere? <laughs> YouTube maybe? Yeah, some music video, but yeah. Can you link her in the chat, Victor? Yeah, yeah. Cool.
you guys have a lot of like uh russian musicians that that go on tour to kazakhstan most most of them are in russian yeah but do, do they come to to kazakhstan though like no 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 <clears throat> we we hear talking in russian too yeah yeah but what i mean is so, like so like if a if a band from like the us or canada went on tour like they would probably hit up like they would go to like toronto or you know montreal or something like they would go into canada if they were from the us and vice versa so i'm just wondering if like if that if like it's not it's not astana anymore because they changed the name of the city whatever it is now like do the the bands from moscow do they like tour into into your country or oh yes of course okay uh, there, here is a festival called for a is for for e it no echo emotional and some something else so for this festival uh, comes more I I can uh, I don't understand how, how to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> many right. artists many artists come from this festival from other countries. Ah, yeah. Russia, Russia, US, UK. Ah, yes, yeah, all over. So, do you do you live in the capital? This is something I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> actually, here is. Two capital, ah. and Astana, which is called now uh, Nur Sultan. Yeah, so Astana, which is now called this new thing, has uh, this will be interesting to Ben perhaps. It's one of the two capitals of the world that has colder Januarys than uh, than Minneapolis. The other being Utlandpur in um, Mongolia. I'm here searching for a Google, but I can't, can't find <laughs> <laughs> even on YouTube. Yeah, I might get some kazoo, maybe. So while he's uh while Victor's looking for uh for that, um I'm just gonna remind well, this is a reminder, I guess, for Beth and uh Ben, but I don't think I I don't know if I told anybody else. Uh next week we're gonna talk about first. So oh, cool. um first your your mm -hmm. first album, your first tape, your first, first anything show, some sort of musical first. Um, oh very embarrassing, but sure. <laughs> are we gonna try and get dan on that call because i feel like that might be the one that actually gets him in yeah i mean we can try uh all right we'll do a little peer pressure on him yeah daily you still need to be mean to him what the fuck man <laughs> like he has anything else going on like any of us yeah. have anything else going on hey i'm studying for school i asked him this because I, I got to eat and was like why weren't you in it because he's studying for school fuck school <laughs> Fair enough. Right. I mean, he wants his degree. Let him get his degree. Whatever. Yeah. He's got a job. What does he need his degree for? Maybe he wants to move on up. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Terrible uh, rubbish. Yeah. I have cats to take care of. I got other stuff. I got it. I've got tons of stuff to do. <laughs> I'm not into tattoos, so that's what I do. do. It's like I never. My wife's like, "Aren't you? Why don't you go on a walk around in the neighborhood with us?" And I'm, I'm like, "I can't. I have too many things to decode today." And, uh, <laughs> what's uh? Wait, by the way, there is a Google link in chat. Ah, uh, yeah. So everybody can uh. Take a look at the uh, the YouTube. I'm on the YouTube right now. It looks there's a picture of the ocean. I I haven't played it yet because we're watching it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
or oh so the yeah the pleasure lining everyone's music recommendations up for a day of music listening oh uh, yeah um we have a uh so can they um can they uh see the um the playlist but but not yeah. add to it but anybody anybody can see it right anyone can see it and they can add to it and they can add to it that's dangerous anybody can add to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> add to what playlist uh that's what i'm about to drop a link if i can into the oh, okay. uh um go to playlist or you know, share copy playlist link so um we started this last week um and uh it's just a playlist of um it's the so stash music is uh the slack channel that we use at work for the three of us that uh share an employer but um we just yeah, kind of just share an employer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so it may be uh it's gonna be all over the place <laughs> so <laughs> get ready yeah, for a roller coaster ride <laughs> uh that's what i'll do this afternoon is spam the playlist with some more stuff <laughs> i feel like that's what i need to do right now i think i added to it earlier oh are you three all do you three all work together <laughs> yeah yeah me and ben are in the same office but oh i'm not surprisingly <laughs> you need to get Kevin on. Kevin, Kevin Williamson. Oh, Kevin Williamson. I love him. I love him. He's you... he's the only other person from the UK that I know is in the in the channel. Marek, Marek is. Okay. So is, is oh, why is, is Harry. it H? What's yeah? Harry's. I can. There you go, Harry. Oh, he's Richard new, right? Bellas, Harry? He's he, Harry is new. I haven't seen him in a, like, I say a couple of weeks, but like a week before we all got kicked out of the office. I didn't see him. For... I was going to say, you don't say, huh? I love, it how the, I love it how the first guy on the list is Mersbo. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, we try, we try and cover all our bases. I just sneak what that one in there. Is like, one time I made this Mersbo uh, playlist for, for like a long, long car ride. You know, and that sounds like a terrible mistake. <laughs> right? <laughs> a friend of mine was like, "Really? We had to." Go I gotta say though, that album is actually pretty. <laughs> by Mersville standards, that's downright poppy. Oh, I like it then. Yeah, good shit. Love me some pop music. Yeah, that's what I heard. Dark. I mean, it's a it's a known fact that I like pop music. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, shit. there's th like. When I think, when I say pop, I think that like, so like Five Finger Death Punch is pop to me. Like, I think that's a fair statement. Yeah. Like if you get far enough out to the extremes, everything sounds catchy. Well, I like if, if it's on the radio, like, so like, I don't know what year exactly, but like at some point, everything on the radio started sounding exactly the same in like 2005 or something like that. No, it was it was after the 90s. No, it wasn't. Yeah, because, was I mean, you had... Kurt Cobain died. No, you had, like, Tool and Limp Biscuit. Those don't sound the same in the 90s. Like, and, like, the whole, like, the whole... Um, no, they like, both kind of sound terrible. You just say Nickelback, Doug. Huh? We know that's where you're headed. Nickelback are great. Yeah, yeah. I said it. Nickelback are great. That's I'll argue hottest that. Hot yeah. tape. I, I'm not going to... I'm not... I mean, like... What, you could say that 90s radio is bad. That's fine. But it didn't all sound the same. Like, literally, like... All, all guitar music sounds the same. All what? All music with guitars sounds the same. <laughs> that, oh, wow. That's the hottest it, of hot takes. <laughs> that's, that's the image of the hot take. I think a death punch is top. They are though. Um, no. <laughs> Only by comparison, and that's the point, right? Like, if your frame of reference is Cannibal just, Corpse, then yeah, they're pop. Just, I just. <laughs> oh, no, terrible! Uh, yeah. But pop was, isn't a bad thing. I mean, why is pop oh, a bad thing? Kazakhstan pop is stuck in. 
90 or it, even 80s <laughs> hey but 80s are back everywhere so i mean like I mean, cool synth wave 80s or like bad bad 80s no 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 it's bad bad 80s. <laughs> <laughs> i i kind of knew it would be even <laughs> terrible rubbish I'm just looking at Five Finger Death Punch and on the on Wikipedia and on the right here, this guy's got a picture of these and his his pants are just crazy. <laughs> You're gonna give him the crazy pants pop exception. Yeah, he's got crazy pants. They're pretty out there. But MC Hammer had crazy pants and I would I like say these that pants, man. These pants like... <laughs> they, they just scream, hey man, I'm I'm doing some interesting drugs. You know, like, okay, fair enough. Need, I feel the need to go put my five finger death punch t shirt on now. <laughs> Being a massive pop fan. I don't know. I don't know this band. I think they're too mainstream for me. I, I'm not familiar with them really. Yeah, maybe, main, maybe mainstream would be a bit banger. So pop's not a dirty word, but mainstream is a dirty word. I don't know. I mean I think I just said pop because you like pop punk, Beth. So it's I in mean, there. It's in there. It's called pop punk. I like it too. Odd it's fine. It. The odd bit of pop punk. Where, that, where do you stand? So are you you in you like metal though, right? Yeah, but I grew up as an emo kid. That's not. I don't know much about emo really. I kind of miss the. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna opt out of this conversation. Yeah, I was gonna say like this is, is kind of a hot button topic because to me emo is something very different than what emo is to everybody else. I was the oh, really? most generation of emo though. Yeah, I think I think that yeah, it's like pop or not. Well, like yeah, all the genres they change over time. Like you know, if they don't, then like you know, it's stagnant. Except guitar music. No, guitar music. I like sound. Victor, man. He made me my favorite person I've met today so far. <laughs> I like how he just comes in and just says, yeah, music with guitars. But <laughs> yeah, that well, opinion should obliterate not, not everything. It's it amazing. It sounds the same. Like, yeah, I can't even disagree it. with it. You can't? You know, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, it's, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's so controversial, but it might be true. A classic, a classic Spanish guitar sounds like way different than Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, but it's just it's different ends of the same spectrum, though. Well, okay, sure. I mean, all music is what a range is sound, spectrum? so at some point, yeah, you know, spectrum. it's all the same. But like, there's enough metal bands with like classic guitar interludes that, like, I think you know, it's full circle. It's a whole well, thing. Wow, yeah. some well, bands are really guitar. terrible. I knew some of these. It's no, no. it nothing about classic guitars or acoustic guitars. What was that? I heard classic guitars and acoustic guitars, Victor, but I didn't. I can make yeah, out what you said. Sorry about that. This this type of guitars are okay. Oh, okay. You just don't acoustic like electric. Is acceptable. You don't like electric. What about like Bob Dylan electric guitar? Like, or still still all bad. Okay, clean sound is okay too. Uh, you don't like distortion, okay? Yeah. Interesting. But Jimi Hendrix is okay. Okay, I think we can all agree on that, <laughs> right? <laughs> like that's that's the least controversial opinion. So I disagree with the sentiment, but I understand it better now. Um, I do not think that crust and grindcore sound the same, although. If you don't listen to very much of it, I can understand why, why you would think that. And actually, the guitar parts of them actually probably do sound pretty similar. So, um, so that's an that's an interesting thought. You know, you change like the vocal style and percussion and things of that nature. But see, and this is why I don't like talking about genres because to me, crust and grindcore are like serve the same purpose. Have you ever heard a band called Fuck the Facts? I have not. They are, I thought they were incredible. I'm not even really into metal these days, but I heard this and I was like, wow, this band's great. Hold on, I'll link it to something. I mean, so like... Oh, my last FM profile says that I have. I've listened to one of their songs. 
Huh. Like if if there's a pig squill, it's not crust, it's grindcore. But any of the like guttural stuff is probably going to be grindcore too, too. Like, you know, grindcore really comes out of death metal. Crust really comes more out of like a black metal sound. So if you know the difference between black metal and death metal, then you can differentiate between crust and grindcore. But what if you know the difference and you just don't? If you don't care, it? that's fine. You know, that's okay. fine. Okay, that's where I'm I at. I mean, I like both. I'm not, I mean, I tend to My find. My feeling though is that there's people out there that are probably really into one and not the other for some very specific so, reason. And I've never understood that. Yeah, well, I get, the picks, grindcore tends to be a little less serious. It tends to poke it fun at itself a little bit more. And um, which some people like and some people might not like that you know like the pig squills are kind of weird you know i don't know i could understand not liking grindcore the good okay, grindcore scene here <laughs> what's that <laughs> there's a great grindcore scene here surprisingly sweet wow. yeah grindcore in the uk is, yeah huge right that's where napalm death is from mm-hmm Huge scene here. There's like local gigs all the time for Grand Cole. Huh. <laughs> Fun fact. There you go. Oh, I mean, my favorite grindcore band. Actually, uh, this is the band that you said you might get a tattoo of, or of you might be the type of thing that you might get a tattoo of. I mean, I, I say that about a lot of things, and then I just put shit on my body. We all know that. <laughs> Like I've since being in lockdown, I've had six tattoos added to me, and I did them myself. So let's put it like that. <laughs> <I'm> the... <laughs> so I don't know about the the Halloween bash. I think that's a live album. Um, but the glitter grind and the flower violence are both amazing. Oh, that's uh, cool! I'll listen to it. I, yeah, I hadn't heard grindcore, and then I heard this band. Uh, I can no longer say it out loud, but I posted it there, and I thought they were killer. Hey, um, so I was kind of keeping an eye on my um, battery, um, and uh, but it seemed to have dropped like super a lot, um, and I only have six minutes left supposedly. So um, I think when I drop out, it's gonna end the call. Um, so does anybody have anything else they want to? Share?